A lot of people with the current day stuff, my bankruptcy, e-begging too much, the mobile game controversy and all that nonsense. Even if all of it was true, which again, it's not. Even if all of that crap was true, why is it that so many people hate me because it's relatively tame shit? Someone left a comment on the video. It's an insanely lengthy comment. And I would just like to read this verbatim. The majority of the detractors don't hate you for any real reason. They just monetize their videos. Those people who claim that they hate me because of things that I say and do, the things they say and do are far more vile. They call people who are fans of me or supporters of me dense. The stuff that's happening today, the continuation of this wave of memeable hate, monetizable hate, is not valid, nor is it in any realm of logic. It is bullying, 100%. It's bullying content, okay? There are female content creators who have had the same kind of thing happening to them as happened to me. And when they spoke up, YouTube and or Twitch and or whatever platform took action, okay? I firmly believe that it is because of this modern day, very progressive movement in modern society that there are certain groups that are protected. I am not a protected group. I'm a white male. I'm the least protected group right now. Basically, I'm out here, gotta just fend for myself. No one's gonna stick up for me. I don't think that I even have to tell you how cringe this sounds coming from this guy. Really, the only question that I have is what does he think of all of the males, the white males specifically, who are just like him, who have also reached out to these platforms due to bullying and also had something done in their favor? Because that has absolutely happened before. What is his response to that? It's almost like your genetic makeup has nothing to do with whether or not a platform is willing to help you. It probably has more to do with whether or not you make the company a significant amount of money and whether or not you are just generally a piece of shit that they don't want to deal with. And more often than not, I think that that's DSP's problem. How many of these sites are really going to step up and bat for DSP of all people? No one's going to say, oh my God, look, there's thousands of fucking awful things being said about Phil literally invented on a daily basis. Let's shut them down. No one cares. But if I were in one of these groups, then immediately they would take action, right? Because that's the thing. That's the thing in culture right now. You have to be one of these groups, right? And again, I'm not saying that I agree or disagree. What I'm saying, that's just my situation. Right? No, you don't get to say that. You don't get to say whether or not you do or don't agree and tell you that that's the situation. Very clearly, you think that that's the circumstances in real life and you agree with that standpoint. The lengths that this guy will go in order to fence it almost makes me think that he derives some sort of pleasure out of writing that fence post. Here I was thinking that he was sitting there for practicality purposes. Like right now, if I were to actually go and flag content and say bullying content, YouTube would not give a shit. They would ignore me. Yeah. But if I had a case, you know, that it was discrimination on the case of the, the gender, race, you know, sexual orientation, if I could say all that, then I, it would be shut down. But I can't do that because I'm a white, straight white male. I, I don't have a case to be in one of these groups that right now everyone feels needs to be protected. But if people were calling you out for those things, these immutable traits that you can't do anything about, that would be really messed up, DSP, but that's not what's happening. People are calling you out on your behavior, on the things that you've done in the past, the actions that you've taken in your life. You absolutely have to hold all of the responsibility for all of those things. There's no doubt about that. So those two situations are not similar in almost any capacity. In fact, they couldn't be any further apart. So these people can literally sit here on the internet every day bullying me and I have no recourse besides a lawsuit. Do I think I'm going to be suing anyone with a lawsuit? No. You know what they say? Here, again, my philosophy has been just ignore it and move on with my day. Why? Because I've learned in my life, you can't fight fire with fire. Right? You can't. You can't. When everyone attacks each other, everyone dies. Right? <laughs> There's no winner there. You can't fight fire with fire. It's just not possible. All right? So I just say, I'm not going to fight it. What am I going to do? Sit here and be a litigious asshole on YouTube slapping fucking lawsuits against YouTube channels and shit that benefit from slandering me every day? No. Number one, it's too expensive. Number two, it's too time consuming. Number three, it's not worth it. I really only think that there's two things holding DSP back from doing all of these lawsuits. The first one being that filing lawsuits and doing all of the paperwork is far too much work for DSP. He just cannot be bothered. I mean, the guy can't even figure out OBS in 15 years. You really think that he's going to put together a lawsuit? And the second thing is, I think that even DSP knows that he wouldn't win any of these lawsuits. That as a public figure, people are allowed to criticize him and call him out on his bullshit and that he's done it to himself by becoming a public figure. But he seems to never miss bringing up lawsuits when he's talking about the people who talk about him on the internet. I don't know if he thinks that he's planting some sort of seed of fear or if he really just likes wasting everybody's time with this nonsense. For every, it's like they say, it's like the Hydra. For every one head you cut off, 10 more come out. Unless YouTube actually becomes a fair place 
and says, we are really going to enforce our rules instead of selectively enforcing it, because that's the problem. YouTube has terms of service, but they don't enforce them. They selectively enforce them in cases where it benefits them. So if it makes them look good because they have a protected class who's being harassed and they did the right thing, they'll do it. If it's someone like me who's been harassed for over a decade by literal slander and defamation on a daily basis, bullying, vile things, harassment of myself, my family members, my fans, my moderators, it's all documented and factually proven that it all happened, but YouTube doesn't give a fuck about me right now. And they never will. Most of that was just obnoxious cope that isn't even really worth addressing. But what I did in fact hear in there was that it's all documented. All of this harassment, all of these awful things that have happened to all of these people in his life apparently is documented. Are we really gonna sit here and pretend like a DSP has taken documentation of anything? That there's some sort of hard drive that has all of this evidence of all of these instances of things happening to people? Yeah, I gotta press X to doubt on that one. The dude can't even be bothered to take screenshots for his news segment that he does on his pre-stream that pays for his bills. You think that he's actually keeping keeping track of evidence for something that'll never happen. And you can say that it's documented in the sense that people talked about it and it was a thing that happened, but that's not necessarily what I would call documentation. There's no names attached to any of those things. There's no people that you can actually point the finger to so that something can be done about it. Unless they change their policy to adhere to everyone equally and actual enforcement across the board. It's just not right. I agree with this person 100%. This should be fair. If someone's gonna get the right treatment, everyone gets the right treatment. If you have a bullying policy, fucking enforce the bullying policy now. Not two years, 10 years from now, not three more generations of content creators down the line. Actually enhance it, do it now, right? People who sit on their channels all day bullying people should immediately be shut down. And I'm not just talking about my detractors. I'm talking about big fucking YouTubers who do it. People who have entire shows based around drama and gossip and bullying should not exist on YouTube because they break the bullying terms of service. But they do, why? While it might be possible that some of these content creators are receiving favoritism because of the size of their channel and the amount of money that they bring in, I'm inclined to just believe that these people probably aren't actually breaking the bullying policy that's part of the TOS and DSP just doesn't understand the TOS. Because if he did, there was quite a few things that he's done in his past that he probably would not have done. Please go to my partner channel, The King of Hate HD, and click on the ads that show up on the videos there. But What's the answer? Will anyone ever hold YouTube accountable? Or let's be honest, it's not just YouTube, it's everywhere. It's all the platforms that allow it. Facebook allows it, Twitch allows it. It shouldn't exist. It should all be gone. It should be wiped off of the fucking site if they actually have a terms of service against it, which they do. But they don't, they don't enforce it. So what are you gonna do, right? Again, me, I'm just a guy, all I can do, and I appreciate the comment, and I'm glad that we talked about it a little bit today, and I'm sure this is gonna st st you know, stir up discussion about it, right? Like, wait a minute, why is it that certain people seem to actually get the terms of service to stick up for them and others, it's just ignored endlessly? I'm probably the textbook case of someone who's been harassed constantly for a decade and YouTube does not care. They just allow all of it and it's destroyed my business, destroyed my popularity, destroyed my reputation. And if you actually look at the content I make today, this is better content than I've ever made before. In comparison, this is better content than a lot of other content creators out there, but they don't have a giant bullying community against them saying they suck. So they actually can get like traction on YouTube. They can get views. They don't get insane down votes on every piece of content. They don't get people crapping on them constantly. I really don't think that this is gonna stir up any sort of conversation about how TOS is enforced on any website, DSP. I don't think that anybody cares about you like that. I do think that it's really funny that he can't seem to hype up his own content and just say that it's better than it's ever been before without putting other content creators down, without saying that it's better content than other people are making. When I've seen actual teenagers doing video game streams that have a higher production value than anything that DSP's ever done. They just get to enjoy having a vibrant community of people who like their content. I'm not allowed to do that, right? It's fucked up. So that's why I am where I am. And I always will be at this level and that's why I've grown to accept it. Unless I'm going to, to go stoop to their level, right? Unless I stoop to the level of those that slander me every day, I will not be able to basically get out of where I am. So it's basically, do I become them? You know what they, is it, you know, do I become the villain just like them? Or do I just say, fuck it, I just keep going on my merry way the way that I'm going. Honestly, I really, enjoy going on my own merry way, right? I, I just, I'd rather just do my own thing. Then just do your own thing, DSP. It was your decision to read this stupid comment. It was your decision to go on this entire rant and continue to do it for what, an entire hour straight? And what do you mean stoop to their level? You're gonna take detractor content, watch it, and then debunk all of it? Please be my guest. Take any detractor content out there and debunk actually any of it. And I mean, seriously debunk it with some sort of real proof, not just, oh, that didn't happen because I said so, you have to believe me. Because that's not how these things work. There has to be some sort of evidence. There has to be some sort of logic that you can follow. Because 
because I said so was not an answer. I thought we learned that when we were children, but apparently DSP didn't. I would. So let's just do that, right? I understand. There's people here who, I mean, basically what I'm what I'm hearing from this person's comment, which again, I appreciate it, is, you know, in a perfect world, YouTube would care, and all this content that's out about you every day would be flagged for bullying, and people YouTube would shut it down. But YouTube is never going to do that. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna assure everyone that it's not going to happen. Again, if I were one of these considered now in the modern day protected groups, they would actually look into it. They're never going to look into it for me. I've already been the whipping boy of YouTube for 10 years. If they were didn't do it in the last 10 years, why would they suddenly do it now? Right? I don't expect them to ever have my back. Ever. So I just move on, doing my own thing. Um, and that's it. And that's just that's what I wish most people would do. You're not even doing it right now, so how are you gonna hope that other people do that? How are you gonna tell other people to follow something that you yourself don't even do? And I believe Meerkat mentioned this on that episode of TBS, but if they were actually going to enforce the bullying policy and all of the detractors are gonna fall under this umbrella of people who need to be moderated like that, DSP would absolutely beat us there. Because as much as DSP loves to pretend that he's so much better morally than the detractors, he is in fact so much worse. And unlike earlier when DSP said there was documentation, there is actual documentation of all of the terrible things that DSP has done and said on YouTube and Twitch in his history. Because that's the sad fact is they don't. They actually entertain the trash content because they're stupid. They're ignorant. Instead of taking 10 seconds to research, like how many times do we get people coming by and say, my God, I heard negative things about you from Review Tech. I heard negative things about you from this channel. And I actually came and checked out your channel and then it was good. I had a good time with it. It was fun. We had a good chill time. We enjoyed the game. We hung out. We had a fun conversation. You didn't e-bag all stream. Yeah, you mentioned it a couple times but you didn't e-bag the whole stream like they claim you do? Well, I don't get it. I don't either. But now we have our answer. It's because it's profitable to hate on YouTube. And 99% of the time that those people come by and tell you that they were watching detractor content and gave you a chance and you're not that bad, they're LARPers, DSP. And the fact that you're falling for this so frequently shows how gullible you actually are. And for the 1% that is moving from detractor content to DSP's actual content because they do genuinely like him, you deserve each other. I don't know how you can have the truth in your face and you just outright deny it so that you can be lied and scammed to. It is profitable to be a professional bully on YouTube, YouTube allows it and doesn't care unless you're in a protected class, which I'm not. So I have to put up with the daily abuse and that's why I choose to ignore it. That's why I don't entertain it. That's why I don't watch it. That's why I don't respond to it. That's why I don't react to it. That's why I don't care. All right. So if you basically watch that content, I can't help you. You're be, I feel like this is something that you have to do. You have to do self inflection for yourself. Like, why am I enjoying watching content that likely is fake or at least only based on a nugget of truth, but completely over exaggerated? And I just love making fun of this guy every day, right? How many people will make fun of me today because I'm wearing a bunny on my shirt? And until he said this, I didn't even notice that he was wearing a bunny on his shirt because I am more of an audio style listener. In fact, during this rant, I was actively cutting the grass and had my phone in my pocket. And it's so irritating to me that he says that the detractor content is fake or only based on a nugget of truth when most of the time they're showing the raw clips like I am in this very video. There's no way that I could fake this. There's no way that this could only be a nugget of truth. It's your entire video just cut up with me interjecting. Right, which I love. I think this is cool. Look, I think it's an awesome shirt. Oh, 40 year old man has midlife crisis, wears bunnies on his shirt. You're a loser. And anyone who thinks that's valid content is also a loser, a life loser. Not just, oh, in the moment, you've had a pattern of being a fucking loser. All you do is watch toxic shit on the internet. You're not wired right up here. You can't be a valid contributing part of society if you just sit around hating on people all day. And what do you contribute to society, DSP? You only leave your house once a week. You apparently don't know how to pay your goddamn taxes. You haven't had a job in 16 years. About the only thing that you contribute is trash to the dump. And even then, you fail to do that regularly, and that's why it's piling up in your garage, you stanky bitch. Every detractor that I've ever talked to actually has a job and actually pays their taxes. So they're already up 2 0 on you, DSP. It's time for you to start catching up. Do something about it. Instead of just sitting on your lumpy fucking ass there, watching crap and toxicity all day long, unsubscribe from the toxic creators and go do something positive with your life because guess what? You're going to get far more enjoyment out of the positive things you're doing with your life than just sitting there in your chair hating on people on the internet because you're fucking jealous of them because that's the truth. You're mad that I am still here after 16 years making content, having a good life, happily married, great time with my viewers. You can't take it. I said this in the first part and I'll absolutely say it again. Nobody is jealous of DSP. Nobody wants his lot in life. No job, no skills, no friends, a fat wife, a cat for a son, a gambling addiction, an alcohol addiction, a DoorDash addiction, and trash piling up in your garage. Yeah, boss, nobody's looking to take that from you and make it their own. And that's why it's your jealousy that propels you to act this way. Fucking stop. Do something positive for yourself. Get a life. Because time's a-wasting.
I'm 42 years old and I'm realizing now every moment in my life is very important. I need to relish and cherish every moment because my moments are getting more precious and far few, right? You, many of the people who hate me are in their 20s, right? Or even teens. That's why. You're just so immune to any of it, right? You're going to live forever. You're going to be fucking, you know, bouncing off the walls, immune to bullets and fucking superhero powers. No, you're not. You're going to be my age one day. Hopefully. Hopefully you make it that long. And you're going to realize, oh shit. I wasted all my time in my youth just sitting there hating on people on the internet because I'm a fucking loser. Why is he talking about 42 as if he's on death's door? I'll just never understand that because I've met plenty of people over 40 who are having a fantastic life and genuinely still enjoying it and going out and doing things. I don't know, there's just something about the way that he talks about it you'd have thought that he is like 70, 80 years old. I mean, he looks like it, but that's not the reality. And you know what they say when it comes to wasted time? If you enjoy doing it, then it wasn't a waste of time at all. And for any of the detractors out there that make any sort of content, whether that be memes or videos or music or what have you, just keep getting better at it because as we already discussed in the first half of this rant as long as you're improving a skill and getting better at something you can justify any amount of time that you spend doing something at least according to dsp these are years you could have been doing building relationships doing things for yourself getting a job working making money getting a, a home you know building a, a foundation for the rest of your life instead you're sitting there throwing money at fucking people who are scum who have failed doing that they tried doing that in their lives and they failed at it so now they just hate on people on the internet Right? And this is just wild accusations being thrown around at a bunch of people that apparently he knows nothing about if you believe him. The only person who was called out by name in this rant was Duty. And unfortunately for DSP, Duty appears to be one of the worst candidates for this because he's already retired, has a family, and seems to be doing pretty well for himself. As for myself, I'm a fraction of DSP's age and I own my house, I own both my vehicles, and I've been with my girlfriend longer than he's known Cat. So I'm just struggling to figure out who the hell he's even talking to. And when it comes to the people who watch the content, to all of of the viewers big ups all of you guys you're always telling me about all of the ways that dsp is messing up and comparing it to your own life and what you do so again i have to ask who the hell is he talking about do you really think that these youtubers who are just toxic drama people could do anything else why do you think they still do it they couldn't ever spin it into something else no one gives a shit about them besides the toxic shit they make so if you're someone who watches it time to look at yourself and move on now is a good wake-up call this comment is eye-opening. For me, I look at it, I'm like, if that's really the case, if what they're saying about this stuff is true, that's pathetic and sad. Because here's the truth. It doesn't matter what these people do. I'm still going to be happy. It doesn't. It really doesn't matter whatsoever, right? Uh, no matter what they say or do or they make up, I'm, I'm going to continue on my, my, my way here, making content that's meaningful to me and my audience. And it doesn't matter how much slander they say. If it, it was going to help hurt me, it would have hurt me in the last decade. And yeah, I'm a rinky-dink small guy now, but I still have enough intelligent positive people around me to understand that it's not true and that people can have fun and have a positive time here on the channel well if that's the case dsp if you're still going to be happy and positive and continue to make the content that you've always made it sounds like everybody's winning out here the detractors get to make their content and have their fun and enjoy their community and you get to continue making the content that you have always made which is terrible and everyone can go on their merry way what are we doing here why are we doing an hour rant it kind of sounds like you're a little saltier than you're letting on if anything it's hilarious because they say i'm such an awful person yet then i also get criticized because i don't do things like sexual content content in the games I play. I skip it. So I'm an awful person, vile, the lowest of the low, but I don't do any adult sexual content. So isn't that kind of contradictory? No, not at all, actually. You can be a vile person and it has nothing to do with sexual content. You're a scummy piece of shit because you scam these people who have mental deficiencies. You suck because you constantly lie on everybody's name to better your own. And when it comes to any sort of adult style content in a video game, you can play the content and not be a weirdo about it. But you managed to jump from one extreme to the other when it comes to this topic. You managed to go from over the top crude and genuinely just cringy commentary about women to an absolute prude who doesn't even want a woman to be on screen if she's attractive so again none of this is contradictory you're just a piece of shit all around i don't do the stuff that you could say was over the top and bad in the past but you know but again nothing they say makes any sense none of it, none of their narrative makes sense when you analyze it from an intelligent perspective it never has it's all based on a, a one little thing extrapolated exaggerated times million and that's how they come with their narratives that, that make money you know so anyway I, I was i read the comment i was like wow insightful Obviously, someone who probably has inside information, eye-opening, and, you know, every once in a while, it's good to at least inflect on it, talk about it a little bit, but at this point, it's like, for me, 
why would it be a good thing to reflect on the trolls and all of the things that they've done to you in the past every once in a while? That doesn't make any sense, DSP. What are you doing? At least I think that you meant reflect because you said inflect, and that's definitely not the word you were looking for. If your mantra is to continue to move on positively and ignore the haters and all of the trolls, then why would it be a good idea to sit here and talk about detractors for an hour? I'm just so confused. Also, he finds this comment super insightful and thinks that they have some sort of inside knowledge while simultaneously not knowing anything, and it's just a random commenter you guys as you know my philosophy is i'm not gonna fight fire with fire i'm not gonna go start flagging videos i'm not gonna get a lawyer and start suing people i'm just gonna make my content every day and ignore it all i don't again it's funny because as i was saying this you know I, the only one i brought up was duty because he was referenced in the comment as i'm looking at the chat people are bringing up tons of others and i'm like i realize i don't know any of these people like people are, you're bringing up all this stuff i'm like i don't even know who any of these people are at all i know nothing about it right like <laughs> i didn't i don't know so whatever. I guess there's another generation. I, I feel like I've been around now 16 years. I've probably had three to four different generations of haters. Like originally it was the DSP cult leader. Then it was Evil AJ. Then it was the Sons of Kojima. And this is how you don't play movement. Then it was the, the Tevin restreamer, right? And now it's like these other YouTubers, duty streams, and other shit, right? It's just generation after generation of people with no talent and nothing to add to the planet, yet they're allowed to exist because other people are dumb and throw money at them. Money has nothing to do with whether or not these channels are allowed to exist. Much like everything in this rant that DSP said so far, that just doesn't make any goddamn sense. But what does it say about DSP that there have been generations of detractors, as he's putting it, different eras? That so many people have come and gone, they discovered DSP, hated him so much that they felt inclined to make content about him, and then proceeded to move on with the rest of their life and do something else. All while DSP continues to sit here and constantly decide to not improve himself, to not improve his streams, and continue continue to push out the same slop that he's always pushed out. I can say it till I'm blue in the face, but continuing to exist is not an achievement. Hopefully one day people will wise up, but I can't make people wise up. So I'm just going to stay in my lane and I'm just going to hang out with you guys every day. And that's that. I'm just, you know, I'm just going to say, I'm, you know, move on. If you can, if this, if this is the first time you've heard something like this, please move on. I'm, I guarantee you, even if you hate me, just move on from hating on me and do something else with your life. You're going to have a better time. I can confirm 100%. And this is from experience. When I was a hater in the Street Fighter community and I took all my time hating on West Coast players and the Cannon brothers who ran SRK and stuff like that, I was miserable. When I stopped being toxic in that community and I focused on being a good player and running tournaments and actually starting to get respect for what I was doing, I had a much better time. And in fact, the only reason I stopped is because I got my back injury. Like I hurt my back so bad I couldn't travel to play Street Fighter anymore. I was like, shit. It sucks because if I had been a, a positive person much earlier in my run, my run was the late 90s to around 2007-ish. If I had been more positive earlier, I probably would have had so many friendships and things. And instead, you know, I got a bunch of rivalries under my belt, but a lot of toxic shit that I did too that I regret. Again, I would have to advise taking any sort of advice from DSP with a grain of salt, given who, you know, DSP is. I really don't know how much experience and wisdom he has to offer, given how he's lived his entire life. And what DSP fails to realize about the detractor community is that it's not similar to him being a one-man hate army on the SRK forums. Detractors are making friends. They're having these discussions that they enjoy having. They're having fun, they're making content, and they're sharing it with the people that are like-minded. Despite what DSP might say, it's not a top toxic negativity cesspool. Most detractors seem to have a very positive attitude when it comes to pretty much anything other than DSP. So again, just a word of caution if you're gonna take any of DSP's advice. And I know for a fact, like I know for uh, June the King, when his documentary comes out about me, he apparently is going to go very deep into detail about my early days in Street Fighter and how toxic I was. I 1 million percent fess up to all of that. It was, it's all true. I was a piece of shit in the early Street Fighter community to a lot of people online, only online. Offline I was a nice guy, but online I was a piece of garbage. I know it. And now I look back and I, I, I fucking regret that so much. How awful I was to people who didn't deserve it just because I was getting a laugh and other people were laughing at my razzing other people and being a dick to other people. And I look back and I'm like, man, if only I'd been more positive in that time, things could have been so different. You know what I'm saying? And this is just a blatant misrepresentation of what was happening on those forums, what was happening in the Street Fighter community when DSP was just, you know, razzing the Cannon Brothers and all of that. Because nobody was laughing, nobody was on DSP's side. Most people in that community just barely tolerated DSP. Some people didn't tolerate him at all. So once again, he's either outright lying or he's completely pignotized himself and believes his own delusions. Because the way that he discusses the past like that is just not the reality. And. It just sucks that I wasn't. And now I feel like this is going to be a whole generation of people who are doing this on YouTube. And it's not just about me. It's about all these hate communities. Look at the communities against fucking Wings of Redemption and shit, right? Like, these people eventually are going to look at themselves in the mirror and be like, what the fuck did I do in my life? 
And that's just such a nothing statement. It wasn't even worth saying because you could say that about anybody doing anything anytime ever. Because inevitably somebody is going to be upset with the things that they spent their time doing when they were younger. That's just part of life for some people. It doesn't matter what they were doing. I wasted like five, 10 years of my life on this and nothing happened for me. It benefited others who were basically people taking advantage of me because I'm stupid, but it didn't benefit. Bill's still here doing what he does, right? The, the detractor people running the channels and restreaming and shit, they made out with a ton of money and probably will one day cut and run, like most of them do. And you're the one left there with nothing, sitting there with an empty bag. Oh shit, what did I do for 10 years? I wasted all my time and I gave all my money to morons, right? Or they could have had an experience that they really enjoyed and watched content creators that they really liked and decided that they were going to part with some of their hard-earned cash because they liked the content that much they wanted to support a creator that they liked. It's the exact same reason that people should be giving money to you, DSP. If, you know, you didn't spend all of your time begging and pleading that people give you money so that you could pay your bills. So you can sit here and act as though it's some absurd idea that people would support content creators they like, but you would just be an insane person because that's the norm when it comes to content creation on the internet. If you make stuff that people like and they like it enough they might just give you some money for it which is super cool and appreciated obviously again case in point look at side scrollers how many months were they shitting on me constantly making shows about me built entire streams milking my, my detractors what did they do with that money did they reinvest it into anything important or are they making now political content that you don't care about because you're stupid you gave them money because you're dumb and now they cut and ran with it and they do what they want now it's your fault <laughs> you're the one who fell for the trap the gullible people to be milked you know, people need to stop being so goddamn gullible. In my case, I am providing you with content that if you like it, support it. And if you don't, you don't have to. I'm not creating a community of hate around someone that's a flash in the pan now because it's popular and then I'll move on later. I, I What I do is trying to be essentially someone making positive content for people who will get something out of it. No one gets anything out of shitting on Dark Side Phil or Wings or anyone else. But you're the person that just said earlier that they were getting enjoyment out of it. So are they not getting anything, DSP? Or are they getting enjoyment? And if you ask me, genuine enjoyment is one of the most important things that you can get out of something. Because life can be very difficult, arduous, and not always fun. So getting genuine entertainment that you actually enjoy can be kind of a rarity sometimes. So it sounds to me like they got something very important. It's literally trash content for trash people. Stop being trash people. Those people that live in the, the, the garbage bags in the Like a Dragon series, they pop up, they're living trash bags. Do you want to be that forever? No. And Tygoholic says, the big problem for you is the tractor content appears before your own channel just by searching DSP because of YouTube, because of the YouTube algorithm and them allowing bullying content. They should be enforcing their terms of service and shutting it down, and they don't. Why? We already talked about it, because I'm not in a protected class, so I'm not allowed to have the same protections as others, right? That's the problem. All right, I've said my piece. We got out of the way. We just discussed it. As I said, I know discussion will probably pop up all over the internet now about this because I brought it up, but that's all I have to say about it. It's definitely not going to pop up all over the internet, DSP. You think that you're far more important than you actually are, but it'll definitely pop up on all of the detractor channels if it hasn't already. I'm usually late to the game. But yes, you did a fantastic job fueling all of the fires that surround you and engulf your business. Can't you tell that this guy has a finance degree? All right, I'm just gonna move on now and I'm just gonna make my content and be positive and say whatever. And you know, a million other fucking negative things. That's the thing, it doesn't matter. It's just like this person says, it doesn't matter what I do today. It doesn't matter if my gameplay is good or bad. It doesn't matter if I'm good or bad. It doesn't matter what happens in any of my content. They will literally still say the negative thing no matter what. It will never end. It will always be endless amounts of negative content because it benefits them. If it stopped benefiting them, if YouTube overnight said no more bullying content monetization, anything that's considered like bullying will not be monetized these people would vanish from the internet tomorrow because these are not the sons of Kojima. The sons of Kojima did not monetize their content because they felt like they actually had a moral leg to stand on. In a lot of cases, in retrospect, I will admit they did. That a lot of the things that they said about me were correct. I still can't believe that we're heaping this much praise on the Sons of Kojima simply because they're gone now. These people genuinely had DSP fearing for his life so much so that he refused to go to Leanna's brother's wedding because he thought that they were going to do something. Or at least that's the story that he gave so that he could get day one views on Fallout 4. These same people were also behind some of the copyright strikes that were on his channel, some of the many, many gay ops that happened behind the scenes style throughout the years. But yes, let's praise them now simply because they didn't make money. Very cool. I just feel like I'm living in some sort of upside down bizarro world every time that he does this because I was around when the sons of Kojima were doing their thing and he just absolutely couldn't stand them. They were the devil.
I see that now because I'm older and more mature. And now some of the sons of Kojima who basically are, are like, we're probably like, what the fuck? Phil is saying we were right? I'm not saying they were right about everything. They were pretty crazy in a lot of cases. But a lot of the things they said were valid criticisms. And if you haven't noticed, I have changed a lot since those days. I really, really tried to change for the better. But that's the thing. The people today don't care. They're not here for improvement. They're here to write a meme to make money from gullible people. If detractors didn't care about the improvement of DSP and his content, they wouldn't constantly be telling him all of the different ways that he could improve his streams, whether that be audio, visual, or just generally not being a piece of shit. Of course, these detractors probably don't have his best interest in mind, but what they probably want is to watch a higher quality stream while they call him out on his bullshit and point and laugh at him. It's the same reason that I wish King Cobra would upgrade his camera quality and actually get a microphone so he doesn't sound so horrible. Some say it's part of the charm. Me, I just think it's poor quality. Okay, time for shout outs, of which now we're gonna have 7,000, okay? And that's just DSP acknowledging outright that he gets far more support when he's talking about detractors and drama than he does when he's doing his usual content. But because we're moving into the shout outs and some of them are gonna be unrelated to the actual rant, I'm gonna be skipping around. BB filled in another super chat. I never understood why haters wanna drive you from the internet. Would they kill their own careers by ending yours? Again, it's, it's really weird because here's the thing. I, I feel like those who restream me to make money don't want that. But the sad fact, what they don't understand is that they would then create people who hate me irrationally for no good reason, who do want me off the internet, okay? I don't believe that anyone who's benefiting from restreaming me or making content about me daily wants me to lose my job because if I do, then they can't make content about me anymore and they lose their jobs, right? But the problem is people watch their content and now they don't have investment. They're not making money off of me and now they want to see me end. And I'm not one of those people that absolutely wants to see DSP driven from the internet. He's a train wreck that I love to watch. He's a reality show that I think is the best on TV. If the show ends, the show ends. We had a good run. I might watch some of the reruns, but I'm not going to be heartbroken about it. I understand that some people want DSP gone in a certain style of way, maybe in Minecraft. And while I can't condone any of those things, I can definitely understand how you came to that conclusion. He is kind of a scummy piece of shit, but I can only speak for myself. And I think that the best way to go about DSP and his content content and detracting on it is to just point and laugh and move on with your day it's not that serious because with or without any sort of detractor intervention dsp will crash and burn all on his own he's proven time and time again that if you give him enough rope he'll just do the job and so you get people who put together entire packages of stuff that they submit to businesses three years ago shit from 10 years ago that i said on youtube that's you know ancient history oh this is who phil is today see he calls himself the king of hate and he's a racist and a bigot and a sexist and here's all the things he's done and it's shit that's 10 years outdated and the businesses are so dumb they believe it and think it's from today and then they fucking ban me from everything. It's stupidity. But that's what happens. Those people are not right in the head. They're they're out to get me hurt. Not the people who are the direct content restreamers, but the people who watch that and then get brainwashed. So he's convinced that all of these businesses that received this fictional dossier of hate were convinced that it was present day and that's why they banned him from all of these sites. That's why they quit working with him because they were just too stupid to see the timestamps and dates on everything. I don't think that's the case, boss, because if that dossier of hate exists, which I'm not convinced that it does, I'm pretty sure that they would have been able to tell that these were older streams, that these were older clips. They just wouldn't have wanted to be associated with anybody who was saying any of those things, regardless of how long ago it was. It's sad that not even his his made up bullshit fake ass stories make any sort of sense when you apply any sort of logic to them. Uh, Maximum Turbo did a super chat. He says, detractors, stop. DSP wins every time. No, I don't win every time. You know, there's a reason why my channel is so small and why I've shrunken over the years and it's hard to maintain. I mean, this is why. When literally every day someone is saying you've done something heinous and you didn't, or they'll be like, oh, here's what you did today on the stream, but then they interject clips from 10, 15 years ago of stuff that I regret, have apologized for, and don't do anymore, but say, oh, this is him today. No, it's not. You know? Anyway. So this is just another confirmation of a troll W. Way to go, gang. All of you clip channels that add clips from the past into the current day clips, you are totally dunking on DSP and accomplishing the mission. Way to go. He's seething, he's coping, he's molding, and what more could you ask for? From Puma Bear. Stop talking about your detractors! All right, we're... How often does this happen? This is just because I got a comment that I found very insightful, all right? I thought that it was worth, because it actually analyzed it in a very interesting and way that's like, oh, okay, now I kind of get it. You know, because everyone comes to my streams all the time and asks me, why do you think so many people hate you or make the comment content about you? Here's your answer. And it's an answer that I can't give because I don't pay attention to it. It's not. It's okay every once in a while to, to call this shit out because the truth is no one else is going to do it, right? How many years has it been where someone had a chance to actually cover the hate against me in a rational way and no one has 
Why? Because it doesn't benefit. Because what makes money? The drama, the toxicity, the negativity. Actually covering my story in a way that analyzes how... It, Phil has made tons of mistakes, and here's what they all are. But here's the insane amount of nonsense on a daily basis that's put out about him that's bullshit. Right? Why? And then analyze that and actually dig into them and expose them for the fucking frauds that they are. It's never been done. That's because that's an impossible task, DSP. Do you really expect any of these internet documentarians to do that task, to go through and find all of these people who have done anything to you in the past? To go through every single instance of somebody being mean to you online and then figuring out why it is that they are that way? This seems like a huge waste of time for everybody involved. And you ask how frequently we do this just about every goddamn day, DSP. You're always mentioning detractors. You're always talking about what detractors are doing and what people are saying about you and all of the horrible things that people do on the internet. And for somebody who's always talking about ignoring the hate and moving on positively, taking time every once in a while to acknowledge it doesn't seem to be following in line with that. So if that's really the message that you want to push, I think that any amount of time spent on this at all is going against what you believe in. If someone were to do that, I'm calling it right now. If someone were to make that video, that documentary, exposing the frauds that are DSP detractor community, that would get far more attraction and attention than any video about me. The videos about me have been done to death and it's all the same shit. You haven't even heard a new thing about me in five fucking years. I just heard this last Saturday night that you don't even know how to use your own washing machine in your house, DSP. That was a new fact to me, but that's a different video for a different time. Probably the next one, get hype. It's all the same shit regurgitated over and over. Now analyze those motherfuckers who do this on a daily basis. You're gonna get down to something people actually are interested in, but no one has done it. So now you're saying that calling out detractors as fraudsters is what people would really be interested in. But just a few minutes ago, you say that people don't do that and aren't interested in making that content because nobody's going to watch it and that's not what makes money. Just more contradictory statements the more that he talks. None of it adds up, dude. Not a single goddamn line adds up. I wish they would. <laughs> I really wish they would. I'm Kirk. It's all my fault. I'm sorry. Haters on Afuera. It's totally all Kirk's fault. 100%. He went back in time in a DeLorean and he started the hate movement against me. In truth, there always was people who were hateful against me, but it definitely was the first, the Rhett Super Eye or whatever it was. And for anybody who was just as confused as I was when he said Rhett Super Eye, he's actually talking about Rhett Supre. You know, it had slow beef on it. You guys remember slow beef, come on. I just can't believe that he butchered the pronunciation of the channel so bad that I couldn't even identify it live. It was only in the recording of this video that I realized he mentioned them at all. That they razzed me and made fun of me. And people were like, wow, that was really funny. And then immediately after, even though he doesn't really admit it, Evil AJ made This Is How You Don't Play Metal Gear Solid 2. And that took off like wildfire. And people said, oh, wait, Evil AJ just got like a million views on his video. That's crazy. Now, what if I do that? So they all did. And they all just made fun of me. And it became this virally popular thing that people just kept riding their wave of popularity to do it. Well, if you're interested in making a piece of content and there's definitely an audience for it and there's a market that needs to be filled, people are going to fill it, DSP. Are you really going to be upset that these people found something to do with their time that would bring other people enjoyment so they decided to do it? And then eventually these things became monetized. And then eventually it became, well, you know, just making fun of Phil's gameplay doesn't work anymore that well. It doesn't have as much traction. It's played out. Let's now attack his character. Let's attack his mannerisms. Let's attack what he says, how he acts. Is, is, you know, other, and then even get, let's go now behind the scenes of his private life. Let's try to get into his personal information that no one should have access to. And let's try to do this and do that. You know what I mean? It just got worse and worse and worse and worse over the years. And I think a large contributor to that was unfortunately DSP himself. He told everybody far too much information, information that they had no business knowing. Because he was so open, people were using that information against him. That's his own fault. I'm not saying that all of the things that happened to him were okay or right by any means. But what I am saying is that you're dealing with people on the internet. And when you are dealing with people on on the internet you need to be very careful with what information that you give out because there are some people out there that are going to do some not so very good things one of the first things that i was told when getting on the internet as a kid was that you don't give out any of your personal information because some people on the internet are very bad people apparently dsp was never given this knowledge and didn't receive this knowledge well until he was far into his youtube career because it really wasn't until cat decided to enter the picture that dsp stopped giving out so much information that's the reason that we have that classic liana story of her at the hospital because all all the way up until Cat was around, he was still just telling everybody everything if he could. <clears throat> because again, people were getting views, popularity, and eventually profit, money from hating on me. That's that's the cycle that it that it took over the years. Mav Strike did a super chat. He says, if the trolls are a problem, why not hop off the internet secretly and get a normal job? Number one, you want me to quit my dream job that I love because of a bunch of fucking no-load trolls on the internet. That's what you're literally telling me. I should quit the best job I've ever had that I love doing, I feel, is helping people on a daily basis in a positive way. You want me to throw it all away because of a bunch of troll people on the internet. 
I mean, just I don't even have to say anything past that, do I? But I will, all right? But I mean, that's number one. You don't let these people fucking beat you. And this just shows you the size of DSP's ego, because let me tell you, if I was doing something on the internet, whether I was being paid or not, and it was leading to my family members being harassed and me actually fearing going outside and living life like a normal human being, you bet your sweet bippy that I'm not getting on the internet anymore and I'm just going to ghost. And I think that that's one of the biggest problems when it comes to these lol cows. They are so attached to the internet that they can't even fathom not being on it. They can't fathom going out and living a real life without being a presence on the internet the way that they are. It's all they have to their name dsp included his 15 year legacy is all he has so while i'm not surprised that he refuses to leave it behind and do something like a normal person would you know get a job it's only leading to further his suffering but dsp is a firm believer that as long as he stays on the internet he's winning he's beating the trolls and that's all he really seems to care about that and his ego he doesn't give a shit whether or not his parents are being harassed he doesn't care that everybody that's ever been in his life got stepped on to get to where he is all that matters is that dsp space gaming as a youtube channel continues to exist and that's enough for him what kind of world is that oh people I, i'm facing adversity let me run from it no you face it head on you challenge it you persevere through it you don't quit that's ridiculous okay now on top of that you know when it comes to this job it's the best job i've ever had i'm my own boss I've, I've seen tried and truth over the years no matter what people support me no matter where i go or what i do whether it's on youtube whether it's on twitch whether it's on a third party site for two months like whip tv whether it's on a social media site wherever it is people are going to follow because they actually see through the bullshit and like me and want more content from me and that you know and i appreciate that the actual positive community is an amazing one i don't want to throw that away at all this is 16 years of my life of investment and for a lot of people it's a lot of time investment for there too they're, they feel like they're actually part of something correct and I can really understand why they feel like they're a part of this DSP because they make all of the decisions when it comes to the streams. They buy all of the games and equipment. Hell, they make the thumbnails and edit the videos too. DSP Space Gaming really is one of the most community-driven YouTube channels there is. It just happens to be the worst and most manipulative way possible. And of course, DSP thinks that this is one of the best jobs that he's ever had. He hasn't had a job in 16 years and nobody else has ever wanted to work with him so much so that he got fired from every other job he's ever had. So of course, this is gonna be the best job for him. He literally cannot be fired and that's really the only requirement i'm not gonna just throw that shit away that's insane imagine doing something 16 years of your life you love and you just quit on it because of fucking hate on the internet like what right like what are you nuts but any normal person would tell you dsp that this is not just normal hate on the internet people aren't in the comment section just saying that you suck they've doxed your address they've sent things to your house they've tried to take down your channel they've hacked into your bank account they've looked into your scopely account doesn't take any sort of scientist to realize that this is not a normal style of hate dsp this is one of those things that maybe you shouldn't be charging head on into every day but dsp doesn't think strategically he doesn't think about any of his losses and maybe cutting them when it's time he's like a bull just charging forward until the matador inevitably does what the matador has to do to get out of there and then on top of that uh mav i get the feeling you obviously don't know what it really is like out there in the real world uh there is no overabundance of high paying great jobs out there at all it doesn't exist although our government in the united states would like to act like there is there's not and as much as I would love to listen to DSP talk about the job market that he has factually no experience in, I really just can't be bothered. And unfortunately, it's a little too off topic for this one. So I think that we're going to move on. And by move on, I mean move on entirely from this clip and into the comment section because I think we're done here. So shout out to the 60 Skulls. Dusty Dune says, Today I learned from DSP that as long as the shitty things I do aren't as bad as the worst crimes people can commit, then people are obligated to like me. That was my understanding of the situation, Dusty Dune. So as long as you're not committing actual genocide, Side, you should be good to go sound good sounds good to me and by the way cat agrees so much so that she might even marry you dj mcflinty 6770 says he frames life like it's wwe as if people who are hated are just the worst person imaginable all relationships of any kind come down to the little things and the totality of his little things add up to a repulsive result absolutely right sir this really just goes right in line with the previous comment the only thing that i really have to add is that apparently you're not allowed to add up the little things that are a certain amount of time ago what the the cutoff time for that is i'm actually unsure it's not a decade exactly but it's somewhere around there i think and full christian name says phil how dare detractors laugh at jokes about my fan base being brain damaged also phil laughing at a joke from a fan about his detractors being institutionalized yeah it really is the pot calling the kettle isn't it no matter how much better he says that he is than the detractors he's just as bad if not worse and i really think that is one of the biggest takeaways from this entire video despite all of his moral grandstanding dsp is no better than anybody in probably even 
even worse. But speaking of people who are better, I want to give a shout out to everybody who watched this video, especially if you made it this far. Hopefully I'll catch all of you guys in the next video, but until then, make sure that you check out other detractor content and dive deeper into that. Snore tags. Ah!